Hello all, I'm Glenn Fox and in this video I'll discuss the duodenum. My objectives for this video are for you to understand the relative location, gross anatomy, and neurovasculature of the duodenum. Like the stomach, the duodenum straddles both the left and the right upper quadrants, although the duodenum is more in the right upper quadrant than it is the left upper quadrant. As part of the gut tube, the duodenum connects the stomach with the jejunum. The jejunum is a continuation of the small intestine of which the duodenum is a part. There are four parts to the duodenum. The first portion of the first part of the duodenum is intraperitoneal and the second, third, and fourth parts are retroperitoneal. You can think of the duodenum in roughly a C shape, and in the crook of that C, the duodenum cradles or snuggles the head of the pancreas. And that's an important relationship because in the second part of the duodenum, we have the major duodenal papilla, and that major duodenal papilla receives the hepatopancreatic ampulla. That hepatopancreatic ampulla is a dilation of the tubes that drain the liver and gallbladder as well as the pancreas so that those secretions may enter into the second part of the duodenum. That major duodenal papilla is an anatomical and embryological landmark that differentiates between the embryonic foregut and the embryonic midgut. So it's there in the second part of the duodenum that we have the divisions between the foregut and the midgut. Although some classifications would put that line between the second and third part of the duodenum. As it's receiving so many secretions from the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, the duodenum is a major site for chemical digestion as well as absorption. As I've said before, there are four parts to the duodenum. The superior or first part of the duodenum receives chyme from the stomach through that pyloric canal. The second or descending part of the duodenum receives secretions from the gallbladder, liver, and pancreas through the major duodenal papilla. If there's an accessory pancreatic duct present, that accessory pancreatic duct drains through a minor duodenal papilla, which is typically more proximal in the gut tube than the major duodenal papilla. And it's here within the second part of the duodenum that we have that division between embryonic foregut and midgut. The third, or the horizontal part of the duodenum, is retroperitoneal, and it's crossed over by the superior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric artery. And so here is where the duodenum is at risk for superior mesenteric artery syndrome. So an impingement upon that third part of the duodenum between the abdominal aorta and the superior mesenteric artery. The fourth or ascending part of the duodenum is supported by a suspensory ligament, also known as the ligament of trites, and then it feeds into the jejunum and the remainder of the small intestine. The duodenum, and by its association, the head of the pancreas, is supplied by the pancreaticoduodenal arteries. Superiorly, these arteries are branches of the gastroduodenal artery, which, as you may recall, is a branch of the common hepatic artery. This gastroduodenal artery is going to branch into anterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and not seen here, but down here, a posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. So these are really going to, from the superior, hug both the duodenum and the head of the pancreas. Inferiorly, 
the superior mesenteric artery, or the SMA, which is a major branch of the abdominal aorta, just distal to the celiac trunk, is going to supply the duodenum and head of the pancreas by the inferior pancreatico-duodenal artery. And that inferior pancreatico-duodenal artery is going to have both an anterior and a posterior branch. And so what we see are open anastomoses between the anterior superior pancreatico-duodenal artery, posterior superior pancreatico-duodenal artery, and anterior and posterior branches of the inferior pancreatico-duodenal artery. Veins which drain this region are typically named in accordance with their accompanying arteries, and all of these are going to flow into the superior mesenteric vein and then the hepatic portal vein. The duodenum, as part of the gut tube, is innervated by the enteric nervous system, which is comprised of the myenteric and submucosal plexuses, which are part of and controlled by the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic influx into the duodenum comes from the thoracic splanchnic nerves, in particular the greater and lesser splanchnic nerves. The greater typically is T5 through T9. The lesser typically will receive fibers from T9 and 10, sometimes 9, 10, and 11. Um, and these preganglionic sympathetic fibers are going to spread out at the root of the celiac artery. They're going to synapse in the celiac ganglion, and then the postganglionic fibers are going to spread out as sympathetics within the celiac plexus. When active, the sympathetics are going to encourage vasoconstriction, a decreased motility of the gut, and will also conduct the visceral afferent fibers, which are those visceral, quote unquote, pain fibers, which aren't really pain, but your brain interprets it as pain. And this referred pain is felt in the epigastrium. The parasympathetics to the duodenum come from the posterior vagal trunk. That posterior vagal trunk will flow to and through without synapsing in the celiac ganglion, and then will distribute themselves about the celiac and superior mesenteric plexus. When active, the parasympathetics are going to encourage both secretomotor function of the gut as well as gut motility. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions or if you're in need of further visuals, please visit the Blue Link webpage. Mm -hmm.